Welcome to the appointment QE module Open MRS University call for April 17th, 2013. My name is Tobin Greenswag. I'm presenting on behalf of the team, Adam Laus, myself, and Jonathan Grinberg. When introducing anything new, especially a new module, I think it's always helpful to have a bit of history and understand the impetus for creation of that module. The Refugee Clinic in Tel Aviv uses OpenMRS as a point of care EMR system. We utilize a standard web application, and we found from the beginning that there was no way to really manage patient flow throughout the clinic. What, what, what I'm trying to say is that there's no way to know what patients are waiting for a doctor. There's no way to know who's been checked in, who hasn't been checked in, how long those people have been waiting, etc. Additionally, um, our clinic is providing services that are past an urgent care type of uh, setting, and we often need to schedule our patients to come back for follow-ups. That could be additional testing or consult consultation with some kind of specialist. And the nature of our clinic is that all of our clinicians are volunteers, and this means that we have constantly changing providers um, and schedules. And so the combination of creating appointments for providers who are always in flux was becoming a very difficult task to complete with either spreadsheets or on paper. And we felt that we needed to do something that tied together our master patient index, which is our open MRS, along with the scheduling and appointment needs that we had. So the module was created to address these needs. And along the way, we've been working with the open MRS community so that what we've created is hopefully something that's generalizable to other implementations and other clinics around the world. Our module has been in production at the Refugee Clinic now for about three months. And during this time, we've done beta testing and hopefully worked out the major kinks. Version 0.2 is now or will soon be available on the module repository for everyone to download. And then they can work with it as we do today on this call. To give you the really high level of what the module actually does, and so that you can place everything into a framework as we start to talk about it. The first thing is that it allows you to create a schedule of when providers are available to see patients. In other words, you can say that Dr. A is available on Thursday from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock to see primary care consultations. Next, um, the system allows you to make appointments for individual patients based on the provider schedule that you've just made. So in other words, we can schedule Nicole for an appointment with the doctor on Thursday afternoon. And the last function of the module is that all of the appointments that are created are of course stored in the system and when those patients arrive to the clinic we're then able to insert them into a queue and manage them as they flow through from the reception area to the clinicians and eventually until they leave the clinic. I think the best way in order to understand the modules, of course, to get in and get our hands dirty and start to play with it. And I'm going to frame the conversation from the perspective of some typical users. The first typical user will be the, mo the module administrator, which is sort of the open MRS implementer and the person who's going to be installing the module and who has a sense of how the whole system is organized. The next user is the clinic manager who's in charge mainly for scheduling the different providers. The third user is the receptionist who will have several functions. The first would be creating appointments and deleting appointments. And also this person is going to be in charge of checking patients in once they arrive to the clinic. And then of course we have the providers who will be working from the active appointment list or the active queue of people who have been checked in and uh, calling those patients in for consultation. Now I'm signed in as the administrative user on OpenMRS standalone on my machine. And I just want to show you that I've got the appointment module loaded. I'm running a 0.1 snapshot, but it's the same as the 0.2 that will be available on the module repository for you. I won't go into how to download and install that. To get the module configured and functional is quite easy. There's really only two settings that need to happen, and those are done through the advanced settings or global properties. The first important thing to set is the default visit type. Uh, we'll understand this more fully as we go through the module, but essentially once you check in a patient for being going to consultation, 
we automatically open up a visit. And so you need to tell the module what visit type to open. The other global property to set is the phone number person attribute type ID. And this is essentially if you have a phone number that you store as a person attribute for your patients, you should set the type ID of that person attribute here and on several pages within the module we'll pull that information in such that if you need to call and reschedule a module or something you have the information at your fingertips. So that's really all of the setup that's required to get the module up and going. And now I'm going to go ahead and log out as the administrative user and sign in as just a normal user reception. And so the first user that I'd like to explain to you is what I'll call the clinical manager. This person is responsible for making the, um, making the schedule of the doctors primarily. Before scheduling providers under the provider scheduling link here, and I access this by just clicking on it, appointments up at the top, it's important that we set up appointment types. Appointment types are basically the kinds of appointments that are happening within the clinic. So here's a couple of examples like blood tests or gynecology, primary care clinics, and each of these types has a duration that's associated with it. And essentially what this is, is this tells the system how long on average this kind of appointment is going to take, and it's used by the scheduling algorithm to determine how many appointments of this type can happen during the amount of time that you have scheduled a prov provider for. So of course if we had a provider scheduled for one hour in the afternoon, and he's doing gynecology visits, which are 20 minutes each, we know, or the system knows, that it can schedule three of those types of consultations into that time. Let's go ahead and add a new one. We'll do a prenatal care visit. You can put a direct uh, description in, but it's not necessary. And we'll say that those are going to take 20 minutes. Save it, and here it shows up, prenatal care. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at provider scheduling. So at the top, we have filtering options, and we're basically seeing the provider schedule for the next seven days, starting from today until the 23rd. We're looking at all locations in the OpenMRS. If we wanted to drill down onto a particular, we can select that here. And if we select public clinic, we'll see that on the hierarchy here, it's a little hard to see, but gynecology, lab, room 101, 100, triage room are all children of that. And so if we select public clinic, we're actually seeing public clinic plus all of its children. So if I hit apply, nothing should change here. Moving down further, this table basically just summarizes all of the uh, clinician availability. We know where they're available, who's available, what kinds of appointments they can provide to patients, uh, the date and time, and something called slot length, which we'll speak about in a minute. Let's go ahead and add a new uh, availability for a provider. We'll say that Dr. Mordecai is available for our prenatal care visits that we just that we just uh, created. And let's say that that's going to happen in the gynecology room. And we'll go ahead and schedule it for this Friday from 10 a.m. Notice it automatically fills in the date, and we'll just have him come stay until 4 p.m. Okay, done. And the last thing that has to happen is defining something called the slot length. To understand what the slot length is, you need to understand a little bit about how the scheduling algorithm within the module works. So let me flip back to PowerPoint. This diagram basically depicts what most people think of when we start talking about appointments, and that is that you have a particular doctor who's scheduled for a particular time and you say to your patient, okay, you're going to have a prenatal care visit that's going to happen at uh, 2 o'clock, so come precisely at 2 o'clock and we'll see you. The problem is that with this approach, it, it wasn't very successful or we didn't think it would be very successful in our particular uh, implementation. The reason for that is that we have a huge amount of variability in patient load and patient complexity. So sometimes we'll have a patient that's very complex and takes longer than what we've anticipated. And other times we have a patient that's very easy and finishes very short of the time that we had predicted that it would take. And in order to use our provider's time very efficiently, it wasn't very good to be scheduling people 
to such a rigid grid. Additionally, we're working with a uh, developing population um, in terms of these are people who came as refugees from all over Africa, and they're not often sort of culturally attuned to punctuality, and many of them don't wear watches, and it was problematic to be telling people, come specifically at this time, and if they didn't show up, it would really mess up our schedule for the whole day. Additionally, our providers sometimes are either late or cancel or, you know, there's just some kind of calamity. And so this, this rigidity wasn't very successful. The, the last issue that was making it hard to sort of schedule in this very classical way was that oftentimes our providers can provide multiple kinds of care that would have different average lengths. For example, a doctor might be able to provide a diabetes consultation where they do training about insulin and other things, which could take 20 or 30 minutes, and then they might do primary care consultations, which would take 10 or 15 minutes. And if you're working with something like this, it's very difficult to, again, efficiently use the time. So what we did was we came up with a concept which we call the time slot. And essentially here, you can again see that we're scheduling our provider from uh, 1 o'clock until 4 o'clock. But what we've done is we've divided it into three one-hour time slots, from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, and from 3 to 4. And that's what's circled in blue here. And we essentially we schedule our patients to a particular time slot. And so we've inserted a 20-minute diabetes consultation here in red. We can add another one, and we can add a third one until that particular time slot is full. And what we tell our patients uh, is, come at 1 o'clock, and you'll get seen in the order that you show up. And so inevitably, one patient will come a few minutes before 1 o'clock. Another patient will come, let's say, at 1.15. And then a third patient will come at 1.30. And during that time, they just get seen in the order that, that we receive them. And you could, depending on your clinic, your workflow, what kind of appointments you're seeing, you could have um, two-hour, three-hour, or, or even four-hour time slots um, such that people will arrive at the beginning and sort of wait in the queue until, until their time is called. So as you continue scheduling patients um, for the time slot that they requested, they might come, they might request a two o'clock or a three o'clock appointment, we just start filling in those time slots with the appointments. And you can have multiple different lengths of appointments, um, which this algorithm takes care of without without issue. And as you start to get to the end when things are getting filled up, then it becomes a little bit more restrictive in that at 3 o'clock we could either have two 10-minute uh, appointments or one 20-minute appointment. And then of course at 2 o'clock now we're able only to put a 10-minute. And what we found in our implementation is that the clinic manager quickly gets very good at figuring out what is the appropriate time slot length to use for different types of appointments. For example, if you have a psychiatry appointment, which is going to take an hour because there's therapy happening there, it probably doesn't make sense to have a two-hour or a three-hour time slot length because you end up with patients that are really, really waiting along, waiting around for a long time. So in that kind of instance, we actually want to go back to the more classic okay, we scheduled you for a particular time and you come exactly at that time or a few minutes early. And the way that the system manages that is we set the time slot length to simply be equal to the appointment duration. And then when the system suggests appointments, um, it will give you one appointment for time slot. And I hope that this wasn't too confusing, but I think it will become very obvious in a couple of minutes when I show you how you actually create the appointments in the software. So now we're back into OpenMRS and you can see that we have defined here an appointment block and I use the term block as just a period of time when this provider is available to see patients um, with our 60 minute time slot and we'll go ahead and save that. And as soon as it's saved it shows up on the overall schedule of um, of providers. And so that's here. We have our gynecology room. Dr. Cohen is available for prenatal care on the 19th, which is this Friday, from 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock p.m. with the 60-minute time slot length. 
If for some reason we need to change that, you just select it by clicking on it, click the edit button, and then we could either change the time or what kind of consultations he can provide um, or the location. So let's go ahead and we'll just move this so he can only finish at 3 o'clock now. We'll say save and it updates immediately on this screen. If for some reason you already have appointments that have been scheduled to a particular block, you won't be able to edit it. The best that you can do is you could delete it and if you delete it, and we'll do this one which already has appointments that have been scheduled, if you try to delete it, the system will warn you that you have three appointments that have been scheduled here, and if you proceed with the deletion, you'll actually cancel those appointments. So if you want to do that, you can say submit. If you don't want to do that, you would go ahead and say cancel. Now let's um, continue on and take a look at how we manage the appointments themselves, and that means creating the appointments, uh, canceling the appointments, etc. And so you can either get to that <clears throat> screen by clicking on the Advantage Appointments button here, or if you click on Appointments at the top on the header, it automatically takes you to that screen. On this particular form, you have the ability to define some filters which then adjust what appointments you're seeing on the table down below. And so right now, and the default is that you look at the, cur the entire current day. So today is the 17th, so we're looking at um, from the entire day of the 17th. Location is by default set to your user's um, default location that's defined in your profile. The provider name, if the user is a provider, this will be automatically filled and we're going to see that in a couple minutes when we sign in as a doctor and see how that affects the functioning of the module. But for now we'll say we want to look at all the appointments so we'll leave that as none. Uh, appointment type, we'll look at all appointment types but these are the ones that we've defined up here in the appointment types area and we want to look at all statuses and I'm going to explain statuses in a couple minutes. Back, just a quick note about the locations. Again, any children of the current um, of the location you've selected will also be shown. So if we select public clinic here, it will include public clinic, but also the gynecology room, laboratory, etc. So we'll say apply our filters. Again, nothing's going to change here because these are all happening in this facility. This table, to give you a quick overview, is just showing what patient is scheduled for an appointment, when that appointment is scheduled to happen, who that appointment is going to happen with, where it's going to be happening, what kind of appointment is it, and what's actually happening with that appointment right now. And we'll talk about the, the, the statuses, but scheduled basically means it's scheduled to happen at some point in the future when that patient arrives. Let's go ahead and schedule a new appointment. So to do that, you just click the Schedule New Appointment button. So let's go ahead and make an appointment for Yvonne. And Immediately, the OpenMRS goes and searches for the patient's phone number such that you can make sure you could be back in contact with them. And it also shows all of the identification numbers for that patient so that you know you're talking to the right person. If there's multiple, of course, it'll list all of them here. Additionally, you're able to view this patient, which would take you directly to the patient's dashboard. And you also have the ability to edit the patient's uh, information using, using the Edit This Patient short form. So if you need to add an identification number, a phone number, etc., you can do that directly from here. The next step to creating an appointment is saying what kind of appointment you want to create. So let's go ahead and create a gynecology appointment. We don't necessarily care about the location that this will be happening. If, for example, you had two hospitals, you might want to select the hospital that's closest to this patient or something. Um, the provider, this instance, we really want that um, Yvonne will come and speak with Mordechai Cohen, who's her uh, gynecologist, so we'll select that. And if we wanted to, we could also put in here a date range. For example, if you want to schedule the patient to come uh, back for follow-up in two weeks or on a particular date, etc. Um, we actually know that we've created a appointment block with Mordecai Cohen on the 19th, so we might as well start, it on, start our search on the 19th and we won't worry about the end date for it. When we click Find Available Appointment Types, uh, it actually says no time slots found. Well, the reason for that 
um, is because we selected gynecology, but in fact we created a prenatal care um, appointment block. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's say find appointment again. And this time we were successful and we've now find, found many availabilities for when this patient could come in. Could, could come in. Now you'll notice that we show the time slot here. And if you'll remember, we created from 10 o'clock until 3 o'clock a availability of Dr. Cohen. And we said that we wanted to divide that into 10 into 60 minute time slots. So that's why we have from 10 to 11, from 11 to 12, 12 to 1, etc. So let's go ahead and schedule Yvonne for the 10 to 11 time slot. And we won't put in any kind of notes, but we, well, I guess we could. And then we'll say save this appointment. And we're still back on the manage appointment screen looking at the 17th, but if we change this over to the 19th, say done, and apply our filters, we'll see this new appointment that we've just created. And it shows that Yvonne Whitaker is scheduled for the 19th from 10 to 11 o'clock. And again, she should arrive at 10 o'clock um, with Mordecai Cohen for uh, prenatal care in the gynecology room. Just to drive home the point about how the algorithm works, let's go ahead and schedule a couple more patients to see Dr. Cohen on this day. So if we add in here, let's say Anne, and we'll put, again, prenatal care, we'll find the next available slot, which is on the 19th. We'll put her into the 10 o'clock slot, save the appointment. And we'll do this one more time. Again, we have availability at 10 o'clock, so we'll schedule that. And now you can probably guess what's going to happen, but if we try to do this a third time, because each appointment of this type is 20 minutes, we've now used up that 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock slot, and hence the system is no longer finding it. So we'd have to put in this patient at another time. So let's schedule her for 1300 instead, and we'll say save. If we go now to the 19th and look at what appointments we have, sure enough, we have our four appointments that have been scheduled. If we want to cancel any of these patients, for example, one calls ahead and says that she's not going to be able to make it, we simply select and say cancel appointment and the status of this appointment is um, set to canceled and when it's canceled it's now opened up for um, scheduling appointments into that 10 o'clock time slot again so if we are not going to do it but if we were to say schedule new appointment prenatal care we would have the ability to put a patient in at 10 o'clock now if for example a patient calls up on the telephone and says, listen, I, I know I've got an appointment scheduled for the next couple weeks sometime, but I can't exactly remember when it is. Could, could you look it up for me? The easiest way to get that information is actually to go into the patient's dashboard. And so we'll go find or create patient. We'll look up our patient. We'll use our patient Yvonne again. Here, oops. Here's Yvonne Whitaker. And you'll notice that we've added on to this screen a tab called Appointments. If we click on it, we can see that this patient has uh, two appointments which are scheduled. One for today, which is the 17th, the gynecology appointment with Dr. Mordechai, and again another one which we just created on the 19th for prenatal care. So this pretty much covers all of the different activities surrounding the scheduling of appointments and the third function of this module, as you'll remember, is to manage the flow of patients through the clinic um, after these appointments have been made. So I went ahead and created a bunch of appointments for today um, for several different doctors at different times. And when we go to the appointment uh, screen, we, we, can see, we can see all of them. And so the receptionist will use this screen to check in the patients. And then the providers will use this, pa this page to see the status of their patients and to call them in after they've arrived. So to start, um, to start doing that, let's go ahead and say that um, this patient has arrived. So we'll select the patient. 
and we'll go ahead and say check in. Now you can immediately see that the status of this patient has been updated to waiting, which as the name implies means that they're going to go and sit in the waiting room and wait to be seen by the clinician. And the waiting time for this patient has been updated to zero minutes. And it's basically started a timer. And as the patient waits, that time will tick up. And it basically allows the provider, as they start to call in the patients, to call the patient that's been waiting for the longest amount of time. And so let's go ahead and check in a couple more patients. Um, let's say that these two patients who were for the gynecologist both showed up early or showed up right on time. I guess they showed up together. And we also had this primary care patient who was supposed to come at 10 but arrived a bit early so we can say um, that's fine. We'll go ahead and check them in. When the check-in happens, not only does it set their status to waiting and also set their waiting time, but we also open a visit for the patient. And if we were to go onto this patient's dashboard, we would see that a visit has, has actually started. And the way to access the patient's dash dashboard is simply by clicking their name. And we have three options. One is to start the consultation. We're, we're just the receptionist, so we don't want to do that. We could edit the patient, which is not what we're interested in doing right now. That takes you to the edit patient short form. Or you could say to view the patient. And we can see that there is an active visit, um, an outpatient visit in the gynecology room for this patient. So let's go back to our appointment screen. And you can see that um, some of these patients, the time has increased and they're already here waiting. Now, I want to explain a little bit more about the statuses. And to do that, I'm going to again go back to PowerPoint and just show you a quick graphic. So we've already seen that appointments can be scheduled. Then the scheduled appointments eventually are turned into waiting appointments when they're checked in by the receptionist. The waiting appointments we will see can then go into consultation with the doctor and eventually the appointment would be considered completed. Each of these state transitions happen by a different user of the system. The scheduled appointment to the waiting by the receptionist, waiting into consultation by the provider, and usually the provider will also move from in consultation to completed. The actual state transition itself is managed by these buttons that are at the bottom of the manage appointment screen. Not surprisingly, the check in button as we see moves from scheduled to waiting, start and end consultation buttons move to in consultation or completed. And at any point throughout this process, uh, scheduled appointments, waiting appointments, or in consultation appointments may become canceled. For example, if the patient calls ahead or if the clinic has a cancellation of one of its providers, then the um, appointment would become canceled or it might be missed by the patient. And those two um, statuses uh, are controlled with the miss and cancel appointment buttons. Now that we have an understanding of appointment statuses and sort of the flow of an appointment through the clinic, let's go ahead and sign out of our receptionist account and sign in as a clinician and we'll see how the actual updating of these statuses happens along the way. So we'll sign in as Dr. Morty and we'll go ahead and look at what appointments we have. And, and the system automatically will um, only show Dr. Mordechai the patients that are scheduled for him and it, and it does that by automatically setting the provider filter to his name because he is a provider and it's showing that this is the patient that has been waiting the longest this first one so he can select this patient and say start consultation and when that happens it just immediately updates the status back on the appointments um, on the appointments tab and I'll show you that by opening a new tab and we'll see that now this patient is showing an in consultation and this will update on all uh, everybody who's using the module so the receptionist would also see that this uh, individual is in consultation and it clears the waiting time for that person. If we go back and look at the dashboard, of course now Dr. Mordechai could do form entry um, and when he's finished he has two options for ending the consultation. The first is to click on this end consultation button up at the top and we'll go ahead and do that and when it happens um, 
you can now see that this first patient is considered completed and can go home. We found that that button is a bit confusing with the end visit button and so we're working on um, how to either change the visual look of it or something to keep that because you can see you have end visit and end consultation and for sort of an un, uh, untrained person or somebody who doesn't know a lot about OpenMRS it's easy to get confused. So we've been recommending that that our providers simply click back to their their patient dashboard here. Their, they sort of click here appointments and back to the patient dashboard and then select the consultation, end it, and then they can call in the next patient in their list. The other way that, uh, that the doctors can start the consultation is by selecting the patient's name, and if they're ready to have a consultation start, it'll give them the option to start the consultation from here, and they can click Submit. When, when the um, consultations are ended, I just want to show you that the, the visits also is automatically ended. So this one here, you'll note that since it's a completed patient, the option to start the consultation doesn't appear anymore. So we're just going to view the patient. And you can see that the visit is no longer active. And if we go into visits here, we see that there was one outpatient visit that happened. Um, and there were no encounters that happened during it. That pretty much wraps up the hands-on demonstration of the module. We've covered everything from creating an appointment schedule to creating appointments in that schedule and then how we manage patients through the clinic. And now I'm going to just jump back over to PowerPoint and uh, tell you a little bit about the next steps and how you can get involved with the project. As I mentioned, we developed the appointment module for the Tel Aviv Refugee Clinic and some of their needs, and we've been now using it for about two and a half to three months. The, during that time, we've managed to schedule about 1,000 to 1,500 appointments, and it's been really successful at transforming the efficiency of the processes that we designed it to address. Um, along the way, we, of course, have learned some things that we needed to improve in the module, and um, just to give you an idea, these are a few of the things that we have scheduled for upcoming sprints. The first is privileges and the ability to say this user can do this operation, but that user is not able to do that operation. Also improving the UI, specifically as it relates to displaying the scheduling information for providers. We also are interested in applying some AI to improve the scheduling algorithms and maybe use time a little bit more efficiency based on the complexity of patients and the historical efficiency of various different providers. Um, we also need to build some uh, rescheduling tools such that if a provider is unable to make it, we can take their list of um, appointments for that day and plug them in other places in the schedule um, and also provide information to the person who's managing this whole process about who's rescheduled and they can contact those people. We are starting to amass a good amount of data about the clinic and the workflow in the clinic based on timestamps and such. And so we'd like to know generally what, what are waiting times, where are the bottlenecks, and create reports that can help clinics to improve their efficiency overall. We also have had some interest in doing SMS appointment reminders because we do have a lot of missed appointments and a lot of people do have cell phones these days. And accommodating variability in workflows. This mainly is as our process change with the changes within the clinics and a recognition that not everybody is going to work in the way we do and we'd like to build the module to be a little bit more flexible so that others might be able to uh, utilize it. Just a little bit about the project and the team. Um, I've been talking, I'm Tobin, and I've been sort of coordinating this project between the Refugee Clinic and also Adam and Yonatan, who are students at Ben Gurion University's uh, Information Systems Engineering Department. This has been their uh, senior design project, and they've basically created everything that you've seen today. And they've done so in collaboration with the community, who's been great for mentoring. Um, and we especially owe a big thank you to Daniel, who has been doing our code review and also did a lot of teaching with Adam and Yonatan about um, how to start developing in OpenMRS. So we're looking for people to get involved. Of course, users um, would be really excited to have everyone start using this module and giving us feedback about what we can improve. Uh, also, we're looking for developers. We need folks to help with code review. We need folks to also develop new features. And there's a whole bunch of work to do. So those are the URLs that you can find more information about the project. And with that, I'll just say thank you and hope that you didn't end up like that guy and fall asleep on me. <laughs>